Good morning from the lovely tip of South America. Today is another early start for the trip today. I'm up at 4 a.m. Yes, 4 a.m. Because we arrive at the Cape Horn at 6 a.m. So I didn't want to miss anything or have a bad seat. So I got up at real early. And yes, it's daylight at 4 a.m. where we are. We're already in the land of the midnight sun. But to top it off, I thought this was the tip of South America, Cape Horn. But I was wrong. It's another place. And I'll show you where it's at here in just a second. We'll bring out our trusty Google Maps to show you where I thought we were and where we're actually going. But luckily enough, where we're actually going, the weather started clearing up just as we get there. But first, some other funny information. Today's What's Happening. And if you look at the What's Happening, some of the events going on are just downright odd for this time. Like if you look at this morning at 8 o'clock, the pickleball court opens up. Yeah, pickleball. And then right afterwards at 10 is a tournament of pickleball. So if you like playing pickleball on a rolling deck of a ship with 60 mile per hour winds in the rain and sleet, today's your lucky day for pickleball because you'll be all by yourself. Uh, I wanted to take a look at it, just curiosity, and there was nobody there. I pretty much expected that though. But just the odds of having a pickleball tournament in these conditions were funny. And where we are today is at the very tip of South America. As we zoom in, yesterday we were at the town of Ushuaia, which is right here. This is the little small town where we went to see all the penguins and went along the Argentinian Chilean border through the fjords out to sea and then came over here to the Cape Horn. But where I thought was Cape Horn was actually islands off in the distance, way out here. And that's where that we were at 4 o'clock in the morning. But by 6 o'clock we were right on time, right here at Cape Horn. And you know you're at Cape Horn because there's one feature. Here they have a lighthouse, and it's the father's lighthouse in the south. Along with this lighthouse is four people that live here and one cat. The cat's name, Calafate. And if you remember, earlier on we stopped at Chacabuca and there was a tree that had some berries that looked like blueberries. That was Calafate berries. Also the name of the cat that lives here. But if you come down and click on this, this is the lighthouse at the end where that the four people live. They live here for a one year term but nobody volunteered to take their place. So they're on their second year at the lighthouse, all by themselves, just the four of them, two adults, two kids, and a cat. To show what they're expecting, all the furniture has been tied down on the ship. So we're expecting bad weather. Furniture has been tied down. We shall see what happens. And to give you some more updates, it's hailing. You can see now the uh, the deck is getting covered in hail. 
what I thought was rain covering the Cape of South America is hail from here. And as we start getting a little bit closer, the weather is finally starting to lighten up a little bit. The hail and sleet has stopped, but it's still freezing cold. It's in the 30s with a good 60 mile per hour wind, between 50 and 60 miles per hour. But that's a little bit better than it was just 30 minutes earlier. Now I've muted the sound here, but what I'm about to do is do my best Jim Cantori impersonation. I'm going to run out to the side of the ship and take a quick video of the wind and the waves and the hail, what's left of it. And you can finally see the very tip of the cape. So I'm going to get a good little video of that and run right back into my little protected area just like Jim Cantori does where he stays out of the wind. And see if I can get a little video of it to give you an idea where I'm at. I'm at the back of the ship. But I'll show you where I'm at as I turn around. I'm going to run out into the hill to see if I can video the tip. And here you can see the little cove that I hide in. It's sheltered from the wind and anything blowing. The wall blocks all the wind and the rain and the hail. So it's a pretty good little hiding spot and I used it several times during our trip. And as the Cape Horn Lighthouse finally comes into view, the clouds are finally lifting up and we're treated to a spectacular view of the lighthouse. Not too bright, not too dim. The ship circled around here a couple of times so that everyone could see the lighthouse, both from the bow, which was being narrated, and from the back of the ship. All the balconies could see it as we spun around. And as you look down the land that the lighthouse sits on, at the very end, as it drops off into the ocean, was a colony of seals. I couldn't pick up the seals on my camera, but I could see it with my binoculars. And that's our tip of the day. Whenever taking this trip, get a really good pair of binoculars. I could spot the seals with the binoculars, and somebody with an excellent zoom also could see them. But otherwise, they would go unnoticed. The ship would happily sell you some binoculars out of the photo shop, but they were selling for about twice the price as you can get at any normal sporting goods store. So do a little bit of shopping ahead and bring them with you. In case you're wondering, as we left, we blew the horn. After all, this may be the only source of entertainment for the two adults, the two kids, and the cat. All day today was just sitting looking at us, wishing that they were on the ship. But there's some really cool world records that Antarctica holds. Antarctica has the highest elevation of any continent. So that's 7,200 feet above sea level is the average elevation of Antarctica. That's the average elevation. So there are some slightly lower points than that, obviously down at the coast, but there are a lot of higher points. So more like 12,000 feet above sea level is the centre piece of Antarctica, or the Antarctic Plateau, nearly 4,000 metres. Coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was at a place called Vostok Station. And that sits about here in Antarctica. And Vostok Station recorded a temperature in 1983 of negative 89.2 degrees C, which is negative 120 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 
To put this into context, everyone or most people will probably know what dry ice is or have had something to do with dry ice. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide freezes or changes state from a gas to a solid at negative 75 degrees Celsius. So the day that it was negative 89.2 at Vostok station, they would have been able to store their dry ice outside quite comfortably. That's a gigaton of ice. Antarctica has 24.4 million gigatons of ice. So I can't really get my head around that. So some more cool fun facts about ice. The thickest part of the Antarctic ice sheet is where the red star is, and it's about three miles thick. And there are lakes under the Antarctic ice sheets as well. And they were first discovered by Russian pilots that were trying to map Antarctica. So I was here, and my compass was pointing almost 180 degrees in the wrong direction. So some of you that use compasses and go tramping may have heard of the term declination. So you get your map out, you understand where the declination, which is the distance between magnetic and geographic north is, or south is, and you can have a look at that. The distance between the Red Cross and the Yellow Star is nearly 1,800 miles, and it's moving. So in 1909, it was first measured by one of Scott's expeditions. Um, they actually planted a flag to claim South Geographic policy. And in case you're wanting to do a little bit of hot tubbing on your trip, even though we're this far south, and it's in the 30s, the hot tubs are still running strong. And the seas? Well, let's take a walk around and look at the back pool. That's the best indication of what the seas are like. And it's actually calm. The seas right now are actually calmer than when we were at Cape Horn. I thought the Drake Passage was going to be rough, but it turns out it looks like we're getting to the Drake Lake all the way down to Antarctica, which is the plus. And on sea days, dinners are something you're always waiting for. All through the day, you're thinking about what they're going to have tonight. And, well, I recorded it. But it seems like on sea days, dinners are just a little bit better than on a port day. I reckon because this is what everybody's looking forward to. So pick out what you would like and see if we selected the same. I have my typical Caesar salad. And well, Cheryl, she tried something different. She got the chicken rice noodle soup. For the entree, I had short ribs with black olives. And Cheryl, she had the eggplant parmesan. Both were excellent. And we both had the lemon meringue cheesecake for dessert. And on a sea day, the entertainer is always a highlight. And tonight was a magician. The back's on the back of the deck, which is where it's supposed to be, which has no front, because the front's on the front of the deck, which is where it's supposed to be. The other cards, they stay blank. I thought of another card, like the King of Clubs, I wave my hand, the King of Clubs will print itself. Again, it has no back, the back's on the back of the deck, which is where it's supposed to be, it has no front, the front's on the other cards, they stay blank. And I wave my hand many, many times over the cards, and all the cards will print themselves, front and back, each and every card. Now, big deal. But if you took a Canadian $100 bill and you left it on the dash of your car on a really hot day with the sun beating down, it'll start to shrivel up so much so that it'll actually disappear and your windshield will be smashed too. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Hundred dollar bill, hundred dollar bill. Then now I get a pencil. So I'll put that right against the uh, center here. 
Hopefully, I'm going to line this up right. You see that? Okay, watch the spot right there. This will not work with the plastic mic. Right there. <laughs> You're not laughing now. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You'll never hear this sound. You'll never hear this sound with the Canadian money. Listen, 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 listen. Ready? <laughs> It yields itself up. No holes, no rips, no tears. Why does that work? It works for a very good reason. I'll try, I'll try to explain. I'll try to explain. I'm going to make like a... Uh... That's the end of day nine of our trip and the passage around Cape Horn of South America and beginning the Drake Passage. Join us tomorrow as all day we'll be in the Drake Passage. So day number 10 is a full day of the Drake Passage, the roughest seas in the world and the highest winds. So see you tomorrow.